there are going to be times when you're not going to have access to steam tables, but you may have access to diagrams that look like this one in front of us. So this one is actually known as a Mollier diagram. It's a specific name for it, and it's a water diagram for the entropy enthalpy data for water. So having a quick look at this, the enthalpy entropy graph, obviously we are looking for that. And we'll see to start with that we have enthalpy, entropy, sorry, at the bottom there in yellow lines. So the entropy lines on this diagram are the ones that are going to run horizontally, sorry, vertically. So entropy lines on this diagram, this Mollier diagram, are going to run from the top to the bottom. We also said that we have enthalpy. So this is an enthalpy, entropy, enthalpy diagram. The enthalpy there on the right hand side are the lines that run from left to right. So the enthalpy lines are the horizontal lines running from left to right. Now your eyes are probably going to be better than mine and you'll find these more easily than I will. And if you have a proper version of this in front of you, a hard copy that isn't such a small picture, you will possibly be able to follow this a bit more clearly as well. There are a couple of things that are hidden on this diagram. And the first one that I see is temperature. So there are temperature lines indicated by these numbers all the way as highlighted in green from the top to the bottom. So I can see starting at 20 on the bottom and they work all the way up to the top at about 800. And if you remember from the steam tables we used, I think 800 was possibly the maximum temperature that we reached on that as well. So these lines, if you now follow these lines, these lines are not horizontal. These lines run, they start off horizontal and then they start dashing. And then you'll actually notice that at some point they drop down and they hit a line and stop. Well, we'll carry on with them now, but they hit that point there. That point there is the next area of interest and that is the saturation line. And that saturation line runs in the fashion as followed by this brown sort of color that I'm using here now. So the saturation line is obviously where the phase change happens. So everything below that is now going to be a mixture between vapor and liquid, and everything above it is going to be a superheated vapor. So because we just said the saturation line is going to divide, be a dividing line, below it we can now see the next point of interest where we have moisture. So moisture is starting at the top as 2, 4, 6, and all the way down to the bottom, it increases up to a value of, I think that says 30%. And those moisture lines follow a similar pattern style to the saturation line, and that they mirror it and start bending and come down again in that way there. Okay, so that is what percentage vapor versus liquid we have in the system. Another line that we can find on this in a similar area is the pressure. So we also have pressure lines on this system. So these pressure lines, here are the numbers in this green color that I'm now highlighting. So these lines are running from the bottom diagonally up towards the top. So I'm trying to get these as accurately as possible. And you'll notice I'm using a ruler, so it doesn't quite follow the ruler. It starts to bend towards the top. So we start, it's a fairly straight line on the diagonal, but please just note it's not perfectly straight on that system. Okay, so that's the pressure in kilopascals. In the middle here, you'll see that there's a pressure in kilopascals again. And these numbers here that I'm highlighting in the same color should match the ones that we've got at the bottom. The last thing that I can see on this diagram, and I'm going to use black, sorry about that, just to make it a bit more clear, is that in the middle here, there is something called superheat. So superheat lines are following a pattern as per the lines I'm highlighting now. So the values here are 10, or that could be 50, sorry, 50, 100, 150, 200. And you'll see that they mirror again the saturation line. So that is not an absolute temperature. It's a temperature above the saturation. So what is the saturation temperature? It's the temperature above 
that. And that will follow all the way up to the top of the diagram with the last one as highlighted. The second diagram we have is an entropy temperature diagram. Just a reminder, we will not be doing entropy in this course, but you will need it for next year. So remember to come back here when you're looking for entropy if needed. The entropy is again running from top to bottom. So it's going to be the vertical lines running top to bottom. Temperature is represented now as the y-axis. So temperature in pink is running from left to right. And there I've got it close to 400 degrees Celsius. So we can see the values on the right hand side, 400, 500, starting at 100, going all the way up to 800, as we can see on the left, oh, sorry, on the right hand side as well. In this diagram, we again also have a curve or some sort of, I don't I want to call it a mountain that goes around and forms a peak and then comes back down again. So this is also going to be the separation between the saturated vapor and then the superheated vapor. And we can see in the middle here, we have something called the constant quality percent. And the values to that are at the bottom. So there's 10, 20, 25, 30, and it goes all the way up to the value of 95. So 100 is actually on this. And let me zoom in a bit here. So that is on the bottom, sorry, on that mountain that I originally drew. So 95% steam. I need to remind you again, your eyes are better than mine. So we'll see 95, 90 is going to flow up and around. And moving from the right to the left, you'll see that we have high, a lot of steam on the right coming down to lesser steam on the left-hand side. In this bulge, we also have the volume times 10 to the 3 cubic meters per kilogram. So these values I can see here is a dotted line following in that direction. It's going to hit on the right-hand side at the saturated steam. So here are the values 500, 200, 150, and 30 in terms of those densities. I'm just going to zoom out again. Once it's hit onto that value there, these values then move up again, and they follow the dotted line as they go up. So you can follow them all the way to the top and see how those ones move across there as well. Inside or underneath at the the moisture, sorry, at the constant quality side as well, near to that point, we have something called the constant enthalpy. And there are now lines here for 2,200, 2,000, 1,800. So these are all the values underneath inside that liquid vapor side. And these lines are running at an angle, a sloped angle down towards the right in this graph. Okay, so let's see what else is there. We also have the constant enthalpy outside. So that is inside inside the vapor liquid section. They are sloping down to the right. Outside, they start at flat on the right-hand side. So we can see the numbers again, if I zoom in again, constant enthalpy, 3450, 3600, 3500, 300, 3000, sorry, 3600. And they are flowing along to the right, and then they start sloping up. So those are the constant enthalpy lines in the side, sorry, outside in the superheated section. Okay, I really do need you to go and look at this on your own so that you can see what you can find in here versus what not. Okay, the other thing that I can see here quickly, there is constant superheat. So constant superheat are the lines that are flowing down that way in this darker green. I can see another one that's coming up here and another one that's going along this way. And if you see that, they are flowing in a similar style or a similar shape rather above the saturation line. So this, these numbers you can see are 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. That is 100, that's, sorry, 25, 50, and 75 degrees Celsius above the saturation line. So it's not just water that we can get diagrams like this for. Here is one for nitrogen. So nitrogen, we have the enthalpy on the x-axis. So this is going to be, again, the x-axis being the vertical lines up and down for enthalpy. 
I can see on the y-axis we have pressure, so the pressure lines are going to form from left to right. We also have, in a similar fashion as before, we have some sort of saturation line where there's liquid on the left-hand side and there's vapor on the right-hand side. We also have other, other values here, so there's entropy is now a variable line, so these are flowing in blue across in that fashion. I can also see in this diagram where we have a volume, specific volume in cubic meters per kilogram. There's a 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and it goes smaller. So there we have specific volume lines. There are also lines inside this bubble thing again. So for x is equal to 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, so we have the values, and these are in the dotted lines. So the values of, sorry, the fractions of liquid versus vapor. I can see a repeat on some of the things up there. And the last one I can see here, there's also a temperature lines. So they're in gray, that's probably not the best color I could have chosen. So there are temperature lines that are also now flowing in a bit of an S shape through that system. And here is one for methane. So we have enthalpy again on the x-axis. So as we said before, that's the horizontal lines. We've got the pressure on the y-axis, sorry, the vertical lines for the enthalpy. The pressure lines are flowing left to right on the horizontal. Again, we have some form of a bubble. This time it's slightly slanted. So the left is the saturation line for the liquid. The right is the saturation for the vapor. Inside, we again have the 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.9 for the fraction of liquid versus the vapor. The entropy in red now, there's an entropy of 2.5. So these values are in kilojoules per kilogram. There is a temperature line which is following the curve of the S. And lastly, we also have the specific volume again, which you can find the lines for those and follow them on this diagram. And the last one in the set we have now for HFC 134A, the enthalpy yet again on the x-axis. So this is an enthalpy pressure diagram. Enthalpy from up, down, top to bottom. Pressure, we've got those values from left to right. And again, as we had before, the saturation line of liquid to vapor, the pressures and the sorry the temperatures inside there that we are now given as 0, 10, 20, 30. We also have qualities in 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and then various other things along here following the S's as well as the values that are going up here. So please can you just make sure that you can follow all of these lines and see exactly what has been given on these diagrams.